guys as we uh, are setting stuff up for the gardeners they're coming in now a lot of people had a lot of flack to say Rick too easy Rick is a pushover blah 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 <laughs> okay anyway um, I like to describe my leadership style as one that's mimicked from the Honorable uh, Bruce Lee. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I modeled my leadership style after him. And that leadership style is called the art of fighting without fighting. Hello, ladies. How are you? It's good. So there my gardeners go. So. Guys, the art of fighting without fighting is simply uh, doing what you think is best and staying a step ahead of the party's concern. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, Rick, people ain't going to want to work for you. I find that hard to believe. I'm such a laid back guy. I'm always playful and laughing and joking. Even when you took my last damn nerve, not the last nerve. I mean, honestly, I, I would think you would be considering to say, okay, I'm getting on his nerve, but I'm going to leave him at least one nerve. No, some people got a tendency to go in and get your last damn nerve. They want to rob you, make you bankrupt. You ain't got a, you ain't got a nerve withstanding. All your nerves gone. No assets. All nerves. Kneel. So anyway, <laughs> sorry about going off into that tangent about people stealing your last damn nerve. But anyway, um, I gave the people the art of fighting without fighting again. I gave the people something to lose. Now, people will fight harder to keep something than they will to earn stuff. This is part of the art of fighting without fighting. So... Our work associates have outstanding pay, in my opinion, compared to the norm that's presently in the Gambia. So they say, hey, wait a minute now. Flexible work schedule, outstanding pay. The work is not labor intensive where, you know, it's back breaking. Why would you want to let that go? So as you uh, develop more and more and put your, your vision out there, people are buying off into that. And so today was the last day. I mean, um, the last work day was the last day that I pick up the gardeners or drop them off. You know, they were complaining, you know, you charging me too much. And I thought the amount was fairly reasonable. I asked the person that's coming the longest distance, what does what does she pay to come to Black Acres of the Gambia? And so she said an amount. And I charged roughly half that amount. But yet still, they wanted to complain and say, hey, you know, we don't like this and that. I said, okay, no problem. Henceforth, you bring your own self to work and you take your own self back. And so today, uh, is the first day of them coming out here uh, by their own merits and stuff, okay? And I will get my five hours because the clock is rolling and the people aren't here. And again, 
not all of them, because right now they're sitting over there waiting on a supervisor, but that's okay. Again, the art of fighting without fighting, assistant supervisor is needed. So if the primary isn't here, the assistant will step up and say, hey, this is what we need to have done versus everybody sitting there waiting on one person. And that's what we found to be the norm here in the Gambia. Not sure if it's continent wide, but it's definitely the, the norm in Gambia. You go to the bank and want to make a bank transaction and they say, that person ain't here. Now this could be an emergency. You need those funds for whatever the case may be, but because one person isn't there, the people haven't been properly trained to carry on without that primary person. So anyway, uh, the art of fighting without fighting, it sees a problem, it addresses the problem, it corrects the problem, and it observes for feedback. You understand what I'm saying? So that in itself is what Sweet Dad is all about. The art of fighting without fighting. And um, pretty soon I will give the ladies, based upon our nearly month of interaction with each other, I will give them some feedback on their performances, on how to improve, and um, ask what additional equipments you need other than what I already know and got a list of and stuff, okay? All right. The art of fighting without fighting. But these are the beds, and they're looking outstanding, but it's okay. It's going to get better, and it's going to get better, and it's going to get better because that's how we roll. All right. And watercress are supposed to go on the ground today. If not today, definitely tomorrow. You can take that to the bank there. All right. So let's see how long it takes our gardeners to get this party started because they just made it out here and they sit down for a little bit and uh, Got to make adjustments. Again, the art of fighting without fighting. All right, guys. Till later. Bye for now. The art of fighting without fighting. My uh, gardener, the supervisor, came and said, hey, we have to increase the water output on the plants. And I totally agree with them. You know, she, uh, along with uh, our work associates, want to see the vision fulfilled. Like, see right here, the plants are starting to come. We have to increase putting more water into the, the, the plants because we want more of it to come. Because if we don't put more water in here, obviously the plants aren't going to grow. So basically, the, the new policy that I'm implementing is once they water in the daytime, we'll have somebody else come in and water later on that evening right before uh, we shut down for the day because... How you doing, Miss Awa? Everything's okay? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yes, we want to see this uh, become a success, guys. And so, um, as I was saying earlier, before the conversation just took place, you know, uh, you got to share your vision. And when they see that it's going to happen with or without them, they're more inclined to jump on board and say, let's get this bad boy going and stuff. And that's what we like, okay? And again, um, that's what I was previously talking about. The art of fighting without fighting, sharing your vision. People can see that gleam and determination in your eye and know that you're going to do it. And uh, say, hey, how can I help? How, how we say in Africa, teamwork makes the dream work. 
And so that's what it's all about. Yep. So that's what's going on over here with my gardeners and stuff. And you can see the potatoes coming in. Potatoes look okay? Yeah, we just got to get more water. Get more water. But it's coming, though. It's coming. And please don't forget my sweet potatoes. You know, right? Yeah, they're my favorite over there. They're my favorite. Thank you, uh, Muhammad. All right, guys. Now, I think we get ready to put the... Uh, Let's see what these ladies say. I don't know what's going on over here. Excuse me, ladies. What are we going to plant over here? What's, what, do y'all know what we're planting here? Cocomba. You said cocomba? <laughs> cocomba? Yeah, I like cocomba. Okay, thank you, thank you. I like cocomba, yeah. Okay, then. Okay. All right. Thank you, ladies. All right. All right, so they're planting cucumbers. And we're moving slowly but surely. But like I said, um, I've been looking at some equipment uh, from Rural King. Um, and I'm looking at procuring that real soon. Let me check the water level of this barrel. And then we can go ahead and get my guys started on watering the fruit trees. All right. Good output. Good output. Good water output. Now let me go and see what my guys are doing from C4. All right, guys. My guys from C4 are loading up the, they've loaded up the 16 foot trailer with uh, five gallon water buckets. We're gonna fill those water buckets up. I think it's about like 20, maybe 30 of them. We're gonna fill them up with water from this um, uh, borehole uh, pumping line. And then we're gonna walk, drive around the land in our carpet cleaning van, RC cleaning van from America, if you don't remember. We're gonna drive around and manually water all the fruit trees. That'll be about two or three trips. And uh, we're gonna do that the remainder of this week. We wanna give the plants a real good soaking, like I said, and stuff, all right? And during the meantime, while they're waiting for the gardeners to um, do their thing, filling up the water barrels, I put out some instructions. This borehole station number one is getting ready to go down to just one tank. So we're gonna remove the tank from the left that leaks because of a faulty fitting or whatever the case may be. And this station is only gonna be one 5,000 liter tank. And this 5,000 liter tank will hold lightly salted water in my opinion. And this lightly salted water until we get something to desalinate and take some of that salt out, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's going to be uh, for the security house and hygienic purposes and if we need it as a backup source of water i would not hesitate to use it but again we're going to remove that left 5,000 liter tank and remove some of the hose uh, pipe fittings and this will be only one 5,000 liter tank stain okay and we're going to move that left 5,000 liter tank over there to where that borehole is. So we can elevate it. And guess what now? We'll have two functioning borehole systems. 
number one, number two. So we have we we will have doubled the capacity for irrigation, and we're still going to do something with that uh, well out there and stuff. We're still going to do something with that. I'm just not sure where my guys have ran off to because oh they're probably going to get a ladder or something. But you know the last instructions I gave with them to go ahead and take that down. You know, they're doing something else pertaining to getting that done. All right, guys. Bye for now.